Welcome everybody to the first episode of Just Eating Streaks. Uh, if you're a regular to the streams, you know that I like playing these of Eating Streaks. And normally, if I'm done playing a video game, if it's a relatively short game and I've beaten it, or something like that, I'll go ahead and play some Binding of Isaac. And I decided, you know what, why not do some of that? and just record it, make videos. For this one, I'm gonna have music from the stream playlist, but if you guys decide that you'd rather not me listen to the, my commentary with my background music, I can turn it off and just listen to some like, video game, the music in the actual video game, or have no music at all, and maybe listen to something through here, but I don't know. Anyway, we have a pretty good start, Glaucoma, Blind Tears. I honestly, I don't know what that does. That's uh, one of the items I don't know the effect of. We've got Jar of Flies, an amazing item. One of my favorite, Jar of Flies is one of my favorite items. It does amazing things. It can, it can save some shittier runs. We've got an eight tier stat and a 4.38 damage stat, pretty standard. And it's Curse of the Blind. Mom's contact is pretty good. Um, I don't, I don't want to go into the shop. The shop doesn't really have much of value. This is going to be completely unedited. I might edit some things here and there if something's going on for a really long time and it's just really boring. I'll edit that out. Or say, I go to the bathroom or something. I'll edit that out. But otherwise, I'm not gonna edit anything. I'm just gonna edit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna edit simple things, maybe an intro if I'm really feeling fancy. Otherwise, not much is gonna get edited. This is not. It's not no editing. It's more minimal editing. This is honestly a pretty good run. Small rock, really. This is a really good run. Oh my fuck. Jesus Christ. I'm, it's great, it's great, very awesome run, I'm gonna blow in right here, yeah, no, that's the best choice, and then I can, um, I can go open that trap chest, it's been pretty epic, I'm gonna be, I'll, I'll, it, we're gonna have two uploads for the first one, cause by the time I'm finished with this episode, it's going to be the next day. It's 11.47 right now. And it's going to be the next day. So tomorrow is going to be double upload, I guess. Or I don't know. I do want to get it to be daily. But in, but before fucking midnight? That would be the best situation for me. Just because I don't want to have to wait so long to record a video. I'm considering doing other things. Maybe playing FTL. Ooh, I love FTL. FTL is an amazing game it is so, oh it's so fun ftl is great and it's emotional it's a, it's a very emotional game losing your friends losing your the guys that you've been doing your space adventures with it's sad of course you have control all, over all of them so you're not really you're not losing your actual friends it's not like you're playing hardcore minecraft or something but it's still sad and i just really fucked that up i could have used those troll bombs to open that Stone chest up. But still, you're losing the people that you control over, and it's especially sad if you, like, have them all named at, like, a, if you have a theme going, or you have them all named after your friends, that's just extra sad. Alright, I'm gonna save that Joker card to the next floor, because if I get the Devil Deal, and then I deny it, I can get Angel Deals, and of course, everybody knows I like these in Angel Deals. I mean, if a Devil Deal is good, I'll, of course, take it, but... I normally just want to go for angel deals because they are nice. I am. I'm also considering maybe using more mods, anti-birth maybe, something like that. Thing is, with anti-birth, I'd have to get rid of afterbirth and afterbirth plus, which would mean none of the cool stuff from those games. None of the uh, like there would be no sackhead. There would be no uh, spun transformation. Nothing like that. So that would suck. Some bosses would be gone. There would be no the stain would be gone. I'm trying to think of other bosses that would not be in the game. 
some champion varieties would be gone, some enemy varieties would be gone. I'm pretty sure the corn fly guys, the little wasps, that, that look like pieces of corn, little corn kernels, I'm pretty sure they would be gone. I think they would be gone, I don't know. I'll have to double check myself for that. Alright, I need I need two bombs now. That would be uh, awesome. That would just be amazing. Please, any bombs at all. I'll, okay, I'm gonna go fight the boss first, and then I'll go do the min-maxing. Min-maxing is something that's very awesome. It's hard to really get a hold of at first, but once you do get a hold of the power of the min-max, then it's awesome. Alright, we have a two-art deal. I'm not gonna take it, because I can't see what it is. It, it could be Mom with the Void or Brimstone, I know, but I don't really care. I could go get those later, if I'm lucky. And I like Brimstone, who doesn't like Brimstone, but it also it's, it makes the, the game a little easy. I don't know. If, there's lots of things that make the game easy that I already do, so I, it's not that bad. Like, I, if I can break the game, I will break the game. I know some people are against that because breaking the game just makes it easy as hell. Alright, can I use emergency contact? Or will it just will it kill me? No? Well, okay. Please be good. Lazarus' Rags is pretty good. It's basically a worse Judas's Shadow, but, you know, Judas's Shadow is still pretty damn good. Alright, one more scent and I'm, uh, I'm sitting pretty. Please, bombs and keys. Uh, uh, not keys, pennies, but I got, I got the penny. What was I talking about? A placebo, really? It's such a waste. Placebo is not bad. It, it, it could have been, that could have been... Oh, that could have been Baggy of Pills. I hate Baggy of Pills so much. I'm trying. Uh, Judas Shadow being a good item. Uh, very good item. Judas Shadow is. It is. I don't know if I have it unlocked or not. Okay, I'm trying to think of more anti-birth content. That anti-birth is so worth it. Anyways, you can play as Jacob and Esau, which is two characters that you play play as at the same time. And all kinds of stuff. Oh, that was so worth it. Oh, that was nice. And that was just even nicer. So there's all kinds of stuff that are really good, that is really good. But the thing is, I'm trying to think of the things that I would lose that I'd like. Uh... I think Diplopia was added in Afterbirth. I feel like I'm wrong in that. I feel like Diplopia was in Rebirth. Same thing, I felt like for the longest time I thought sack it, the sacks were in Rebirth. Alright, not taking that. Sorry, Zane. Not taking that. But nope, turns out those were Afterbirth. So there's all kinds of stuff that I didn't even realize. I don't know why. I, I did play quite a, quite a lot of just vanilla Rebirth. I, I have, that said, I have spent most of my time playing Afterbirth and Afterbirth Plus, not just Vanilla Rebirth, so it would be different. But let, let's think about the stuff I would gain. I would gain lots of really awesome items, red key, knockout drops, stuff like that. Very cool items. I would gain two really awesome characters. I would gain a whole extra route, an amazing soundtrack, just a, amazing. Oh my god. Pristine soundtrack. Uh, really cool bosses. All around, just an amazing mod. Some people say it's e even it's better than Afterbirth and Afterbirth Plus. With all of the booster packs, I would say no, but but without bo booster packs, maybe. I've never played it, so I couldn't tell you. But it, from what it seems like, maybe. I won't be able to I won't be able to know until I've actually played it. So I'm going to play it and if I play it I'll probably record it. So but the real question is will I make a series out of it? That remains to be determined. Okay, I probably should have taken the hit first before jokering in to an angel deal. 
that would have been a great idea. All right, let's pop the flies. Draw flashes. Amazing. It's a great item. Oh, okay. So yeah, of course I'm gonna play this. Oh my god. Oh, Sacred Heart. That's what they're called, right? They're called Sacred Hearts. I'm, I'm not calling them something that it's not. Are these all runaway hearts? Yeah, the, the, the hearts that run away from you whenever you try and pick them up. Okay, I did not get anything out of that. That is surprising. If I find more hearts, I'm gonna play it though. That's just an amazing thing and I have so much health. I'm pretty sure you can get magic mush from from these, but I'm not gonna waste all my bombs on them. I'm was I'm also been thinking about playing through Half Life, uh, Half Life Opposing Force, and the Half Life Two. Uh, I forget what exactly what it's called, but it's a mod of Half Life One that recreates Half Life Two. If people who made Half-Life 2, it's basically just, what if we had Half-Life 2, but the people who made it had no idea how to design video games, and it is, the clips I've seen are amazing, just, just awesome. So, considering playing any of those, Plants vs. Zombies, I'm gonna get to eventually, same thing with Deltarune, I'm gonna get to that eventually. I'm playing Isaac right now. Isaac and Custom Zombies are just my two go-to games for just playing, playing for the stream. I don't even really play Zombies that much, but I've been playing it for the stream. Well, I've played it today for the stream, and I know I'm going to be playing it even more because I've, I, it's been a while since I've played actual Zombies. It's been quite a long time, which is, it kind of sucks, but oh well, what can you do? I mean, I'm playing it right now. And it's still fun. It's, it's, it didn't become bad. Black Ops 4 Zombies was kind of weird. I thought it was good. I was one of the few people that actually liked Black Ops 4 Zombies. But, that said, I mean, I still played it. It's not like I've been uh, disillusioned or something and taken away from my love for something that has been that I've been playing since I was a little child. I don't know if it was very good that I was playing it as a little child, but I was. It's not nothing like that. I just really haven't been. I've been playing other things. I wonder how many kids, how how many kids, have played Call of Duty whenever they were not supposed to. But I it probably just an inordinate amount. Just really, just an insane amount. Alright, it's time to go get that angel deal, because you got the guaranteed chance now. I, I, I don't even understand anymore. I get, I get that they want to keep kids from purchasing games that might scar them, but at this point, it's just like, damn, what are you actually getting done? I, I, I bet there's some kids who haven't been able to play those types of games thanks to their rating. But, almost everybody I know has been able to play games that are rated M or were rated T, even though they were not a teenager or mature, 17 and up. Even then, also, Minecraft is E10. Everybody's played Minecraft. E10 and up. Every, everybody who's 10 and up, which is basically just the intermediate between... Uh, it's the intermediate between everyone and teen, I guess. Uh, kind of like how teen used to be the interme intermediate between everyone and mature. They have two intermediates. I, I don't know why. They never even... How did I not get a W? They... Uh, you know what? I'm going to abuse this shit anyways. Because there's lots of red health and a rainbow poop. So I could totally abuse that. Oh. Well, that was just a waste. I don't understand why they needed another intermediate for the rating system whenever there are barely any T-rated T games. Trinity Shield, awesome. I'm gonna prick myself one more time. Okay, we're getting close to some shady territory. Alright, that that's what I wanted. You are what I wanted. If shit gets hairy, I'll pop the day guys. It feels like 
before they make the... I, I guess some things aren't T because they're E10 now. But the E10 in, is, in and of itself doesn't seem like it has much of a point. They could just fuse it into one. Kind of like the TV ratings. Which, which, those don't even, they, those make even less sense. Okay, that's what I was looking for. The TV raid, I'll prick myself one more time. Please don't teleport me. Alright. Pop in the day, guys. That makes even less sense, the TV ratings. Because, like, I guess, if you have watchful parents, which kids who are probably watching TV are more than likely sat in front of a TV because their parents don't feel like watching them. Maybe if you have watchful parents, the parents will say, No, I don't want them watching a 14 and up show. I need to make them stop watching that. But most people, most parents are probably not even going to catch it in time. I, I mean, it's. I guess it's nice to have it, but... I just don't understand why that's so regulated. It sounds. It seems like it's just a formality for the sake of having a formality, which doesn't make much sense to me. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe there is some big reason that I'm missing, and that I'm actually Satan for not wanting there to be such strict ratings. I understand the old adults thing. Like no, no place that holds video games will even take adult rated games except for Steam. So I understand that. Cause that's just porn games basically. So I understand that. I mean, them not selling porn games I mean. But it's, it's just the weird. Also I just found this out. I didn't even know this. Apparently um, using the, cur the, the self sacrifice room will get rid of curses. Do I? I'm not gonna do the. I'm not gonna play the peeler. Normally, I I will play the peeler, but I've gotten I've been rewarded by choosing not to play the peeler and take <clears throat> and taking the humbling bundle. The humbling bundle nearly always being worth it. I love the peeler. The peeler is an amazing item. It gives you a permanent damage up and also a bunch of meat boy meat cube familiars. Great item. Really great item, but I prefer me double drops, and even better, double drops plus contract from below, which would give me quadruple drops. Drops. Yeah, I really, I don't, I don't get why. It seems like it's just, it, more than likely it's a money making scheme, just for like, just so that the institutions that we have can make more money by telling these guys, hey, you gotta pay us to get this special thing that says kids can watch your show or else we will shut you down and you won't be able to. But, damn, I mean, that makes perfect sense to me. And it's not like, people are like, oh, you're assuming motive, never assume motive. Like, yeah, it's bad, but what do you expect? This isn't like, I'm not saying, oh, they're evil, because this isn't, in, that's not, it's a bad thing, and it's shady as hell, but, but that's what you should come to expect from those, from institutions that are given so much power. I'm not, I'm not saying, oh, it's some big conspiracy, I'm just saying, like, what, what do you expect? That's, that's just what you should come to expect whenever you're given power, they'll find ways to grab more power. But suddenly that makes me a conspiracy theorist. Uh, like, because you, it's not, whenever I assume somebody's motive, I'm not, I'm not saying like, oh, this person is subverting you. I'm saying, what do you expect? Like, I'm pretty, sh I'm, I'm fairly certain most people want this thing, like, want this thing because it does that, that kind of thing. Well, most people, whenever it comes to government, not so, but like for example, if you elect elected individuals, and you you call some you call an elected individual out for doing something you don't like, they'll be like, no, don't assume motive. Well, but then you're you're calling them out for something you don't like that people voted for them to do. So I mean, like, I'm not assuming motive. I'm not. I'm, I'm just calling out motive that I don't like. And. It, I don't understand. I guess it's just 
some subtle form of discrediting of an opinion that you don't like, maybe. I don't know. But it, it, if that is, then it works, because the few times that that card, the, that the Don't Assume Motive card has been played, I have just been basically shut down. Not every time, though. Alright, does the, does the mom's tear thing, if, okay, that was great. Does it affect them while they are shut, though? Because if so, that's just, that's just terrible. That just means we're waiting. And I do not like waiting. Okay, a very good note, a very, very, very good note of the curse rooms, playing self-sacrifice rooms, not curse rooms, playing self-sacrifice rooms removes curses. I'm so glad I, I've learned that knowledge now. That just makes everything seem so much simpler. Seriously, oh my god. I, I, I feel... I feel like... I feel like I've been enlightened. I am... I, I'm officially woke. I am woke now. I know. I know everything. I've been enlightened. Thank you, God. Alright, I have a feeling that there's room. Right here. I was wrong. My feeling was incorrect. Okay, I do have another feeling. Ooh, ooh, that there might be one right here. Yep. I got a feeling. Money. And we got. Ooh, that's a, that's a nice. That's a nice. I'll go for it. Yeah. Dim bulbs. Does that? Oh, that that that's a permanent synergy. Oh, I'm taking Dim Bulb. Sorry, Broken Magnet. I like Broken Magnet. I think it's... I think Broken Magnet's nice. I think Broken Magnet is nice. But the permanent synergy of Dim Bulb with Jar of Flies? That's too much to pass up. That is... Tier to like, Is that a tier cap? Does that break the tier cap? Or is that... Uh, tears up? Yeah, because if it's a tier to lay down and not a tears up, that's just gonna... I will actually rejoice. Broken Magnet is still worth it though. If I find a way to get more, uh, more spots, more trinket slots, then I'll go back and grab it, of course. That's, good. That's just like a no-brainer. I don't, I don't know it. I don't exactly know how it works. I don't know if it's always coins or if it chooses just one type of pickup to drag towards you. Either way, I mean, still pretty good. It's not... It, it, it's only a positive, especially if you don't have flight. I'm looking around for tinted rocks. I'm not very good at spotting tinted rocks on the lower floors. If I'm uh, if I'm up on the, the first and second floor, I can spot them pretty well. But on, like, as soon as I'm done with that, it gets a little bit harder to spot them. Right, I'm not even going to mess with those pills. I'm going to... All right, Diplopia is coming. Diplopia is coming with us. He's, he, we're just going to have him sit in the back. This is why I love Backpack. And Backpack is nearly an almost take for me. It's, it's an item that if I see, more likely than not, if I have the money to, to get, I will grab. Even if I don't have it. Because, I mean, you can just store whatever the fuck you want back there as long as it's an active item. Now I don't have to sacrifice my Jar of Flies to take Diplopia with me. Diplopia can just come with me. It's great. And now if I find a steam sail or something, I can duplicate all of that. If I get a Yara, that means once I get to the chest, I will have eight... No, I will have 16 chests open, which that's just amazing. There's so much good to do. Okay, BBF is... BBF's nice. <laughs> BBF, it, like... I'd probably reroll if I had the chance to, but say if I have BFFs or like the, the duplication box, the box, I forget what it's called. I'd do it. Ooh, shiny rocks, nice. Let's see this. Okay, okay. Nice. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Angel. Thank you very much. I could take damage and then come. No. Gulping. Gulping Dim Bulb would make everything so awesome. If I gulped Dim Bulb, that's another situation where I would just rejoice. I would be, I would be complete. 
That would just be amazing. My, my, oh, oh, well. Oh, yes, yes. What did I tell you? I gulped, I, I gulped it. I asked the game, I prayed to the game, I said, please, may I please gulp this trinket? I will literally rejoice. And you know what he said? He said, Dost. No, 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 not Dost thou rejoice. No, he says, Thou shalt rejoice. Thou shalt rejoice, for I have blessed thee. Alright, let's um just check, you know. I hate how people get mad about Minecraft music. They're like, oh, it's not even nostalgic anymore. If you listen to Minecraft music for the nostalgia, then I feel bad for you. Because, okay, I don't listen to Minecraft music for the nostalgia. Because Minecraft, though nostalgic for me, it's always been in my life. It's not something that I've lost and then come back to or anything like that. Minecraft's just been chilling there being like, hey, what up? And that's been about it for me. So, the Minecraft music's just been there, and I've just been vibing to it ever since. Ever since, like, 2010, when it, no, it, 2010 or 2011, I can't really remember, whenever I got the game. Ever since then, I've just been like, yo, listening to my Minecraft music. Haunt Musky, the background music right now, the menu music, all of it, because I love all of it. And then people get aggravated, it's not even nostalgic anymore. The, for me, there was no nostalgia to begin with. I've just been listening to it because I think it sounds great. So, your misconceptions are just baffling. We are looking for a steam sale right now. I'll take the soul heart. Okay, well, there's options. I need to get there's options. That is, or no, that's more options. Uh, still. More options, there's options, both amazing items. Does this one, this one still has use to me, especially because I haven't found the item room yet. So yeah, definitely still has use to me. If I can get enough money, I will definitely grab more options and then get it. There's options, of course, being slightly more useful because with there's options, you still will be able to actually keep the use. You'll be able to keep the use of, okay, I'll just bomb this. You'll be able to keep the use. Oh, you can kind of dupe stuff with that. You'll be able to keep the use into the womb without being scared. Uh, without being, being scared. What? You'll be able to keep the usage without having to go and get some little trinket, and you have to get lucky to even get that trinket. All right. Uh, nope. Nothing here. I'm having a hard time speaking today. Or really just for the stream. Didn't mean to donate, but oh well. Thank god I got those options. I'm sir I don't even I'm gonna be honest, I I'm trying to remember how I first found this game. I think it was thanks to game theory and and Northern Lion. Northern line, okay. Okay. This is gonna tie into FTL. The Binding of Isaac and FTL are very intertwined for me. Um, they're both roguelites. They're both games I, I play a whole lot of, and they are both on Steam. So, if I remember correctly, we have FTL. FTL. I got introduced to thanks to the Game Grumps. They played they played it for a Steam train, and I got instantly hooked. I was like, "Fuck! I need that! I need that now!" And then I got it. And then there was Northern Lion, or yeah, I think it was Northern Lion or somebody who was like Northern Lion, very similar to him. And like, if I watched them, I would get Northern Lion recommended to me. One of those guys playing FTL. And also, so, this also, uh, watching that also got me recommended Kerbal videos, and also got me recommended Univer Universe Sandbox videos, so it might not have been Northern Lion, but someone similar to Northern Lion, I don't really remember. 
but from that I get introduced to FTL, right? Same time frame, there's a game theory video made about the Binding of Isaac, and I click on it, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I get introduced into Isaac, and the same time, I'm, st I'm watching Isaac videos about Northern Lion, perfect storm for me to be like, fuck, I need this game. Then I started watching Tear of Grace, and then I got the game, and here I am now. If it wasn't for YouTube... So many games that I play now would not exist, would, would not, not exist, would not be even like a thought in my brain. If it wasn't for YouTube, I would not be playing Minecraft, which means if it wasn't for YouTube, I probably wouldn't be into video games today. Or I would be, but to a much smaller extent, it would have been a much smaller thing. Minecraft was basically my gaming catalyst. I owe everything to Minecraft. I sound like I'm in debt to it. Ooh, ooh, I don't want to do those. I, I, I sound like I'm in debt to it, but... It's... It's a blessing and it's a curse. Being a gamer. <clears throat> God, I got... Shit, shit in my throat. Yeah, Minecraft... Minecraft is nostalgic. But, I don't... Like, I don't hold nostalgia in its music. And it's never been fucking dead to me, like I said. So I don't really hold that same view that a lot of people have. Minecraft's just been like... Something I played. And I... Played a whole lot of it. And because of it... <clears throat> Minecraft and YouTube working together kind of fed into each other. And them working together exposed me to everything. My, my pre-Minecraft era was mostly Nintendo. Nintendo and like things that were on Nintendo. So like Mega Man or uh, Me Mega Man. Anything Smash Brothers related at all. I Speaking of which, I've always wanted Mega Man and also Geno in Smash. Those were my two number one picks and... One of them got in. So Mega Man, uh, Punch Out, Pokemon, Earthbound, which is Earthbound is again thanks to YouTube, but this was pre Minecraft. Thanks to YouTube, Chugga Conroy, and some other smaller YouTubers. Like I, he was called like playing with Moe, that guy. He has like, I think only 40k. He was relatively small. Thanks to those guys, I got Earthbound and I got exposed to that at like 8 years old. So that was that was really something. I, I guess I'm pretty lucky. I'm one of the few people that actually had Earthbound in their childhood. Few, relatively few of course. I mean, there's a whole lot, there's a whole lot of people that have played Earthbound in their childhood. It's just... Comparatively speaking to other games, it's fairly few, and lots of them get introduced like tween age or teen age or adulthood. Not many, uh, maybe in my generation, many are, but in especially in the actual generation where Earthbound fucking came out, definitely not. Speaking of Earthbound, there's Mother 3, Earthbound sequel, playing. So yeah, I owe Minecraft, my, okay, Minecraft and Chugga Conroy. <laughs> I gotta, I just gotta add Chugga Conroy there because he, watching him play video games, uh, made me want to play those same video games. Pokemon especially, not modern, oh god, modern Pokemon is, mm, it makes me, it makes me scrunch up, it makes me look as sour, it makes me look as if I just ate a limit, I scrunch up, I, my, mouth just kind of forms, it sucks right into my face, and I go, ooh, modern Pokemon? Ugh. And that's why I only play ROM hacks. I played, I streamed all of Gen 8, I played through it, and I had a pretty alright time. It's just, like, come on. Really? 
They're, they're, they work. Modern Pokemon works, but you could do so much better. Why is it that your best games are from 10 years ago? Yera is great. The Emperor is... Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pop the Magician now. Why? Why is your best work... Okay, I, I, have, I have Lazarus Risen and Blue Baby both just waiting to be popped. Why are your best games from years ago? Why? Why can't you innovate? Why are you so afraid to actually do something interesting? Why? Oh, we're okay. Let's get over. Let's go over this. Gen one, they added stuff. Gen two, they add. Gen three, the they detract a single thing, which is cross generational trading, because of compatibility issues. There were ways to that could have made it work, but you could probably cut them a little slack. Gen four, they added more, and also there was cross cross trading. Gen five, they just added more. They took they they t they took a few things away like Pokemon falling behind you and contests, but the gym, general stuff stays the same. Gen six, they add Mega Evolution, new gimmick, and we this is a gimmick that is just assumes to be permanent. This is a permanent gimmick. This gimmick will stay, and it will be great. It will add all kinds of things, all kinds of epic awesomeness. And each generation, we're also going to get Mega Evolutions. Nope! No! No new Mega Evolutions ever! Instead, we get Z-Moves, everything gets removed. Well, not not everything, but, you know, Z-Moves gets removed. But instead of... Uh, I mean, Z-Moves. Mega Evolution gets removed. Instead of Mega Evolutions, we get Z-Moves now. Alongside some other new stuff. Also, we're on an island. Bye-bye, HMs. Thank you. Z moves, not as cool, not as cool at all, and they're dumb. They're not cool and they're dumb. They're just stupid. They're dumb and they're stupid and they're not cool, and I don't like them. And then they press the reset button again. What happens? Gen 8, Dynamax, Gigamax, whatever the fuck, Gigantamax, whatever the hell. Worse Mega Evolution, and now they're big. Now they're big. The graphics get worse. Everything gets terrible, and we don't even have the full-on national decks. You want you want the national decks? Well, you national decks. You want the national decks? Well, you better pay up. If you want the full gaming experience, you have to pay up. And then people they say you're they say you're entitled if you want the actual full gaming experience that has been promised to you in each previous generation. They call they they say that you're entitled. Whenever you expect what has been delivered to you the last seven times. At this point, I don't even I don't even pay for Pokemon games. I just play ROM hacks because you know what ROM hacks do? They do they do well. They do cool stuff. Insurgents. That's not even a ROM hack. Did cool stuff. Clover. Very cool stuff. Crystal clear. Amazing. Actual good content. Actual stuff. Doesn't even have to be new. It just has to be. Doesn't need new Pokemon as long as there is actual innovation in the formula, which there won't be. The only innovation we're gonna get is new gimmicks, new transformation gimmicks. Innovation in the formula, that's all. That's all that was needed. Insurgents adds dar darker story, and it adds <sighs> fucking drawing a blank. Adds darker story, adds challenge modes, adds uh, Delta Pokemon which are basically like the regional variant Pokemon for Gen 7 and 8, which were actually pretty good. That is one thing I will give them. Regional variant Pokemon, great idea. So it has Delta Pokemon, which are like regional variant, variant Pokemon, but more different, and it's challenges. I haven't played through all of Insurgents, so that's all I know. It probably adds at least a little bit more. I know you can play Nuzlocke mode. Pokemon Clover, it adds more a 100% original lineup of Pokemon. And adds act it adds edgy humor, and it isn't dumb. Crystal clear. Takes Gen two, makes it completely open world. There are no there. There are no HMs. HMs are gone, and not just HMs are gone, and they get replaced by a little Charizard that you ride around or some BS like that. No, HMs are gone, and that's it. They're gone. You 
You don't have to smash rocks. You don't have to do any trees. You can just walk wherever you want. Everything skills with your gym badges and you can go wherever you want, whenever you want. And it's amazing. It's amazing. It is the greatest Pokemon experience I've had. I've done a Nuzlocke of it. I probably privated the videos because they were kind of cringe. But my god, were they awesome. Oh my god. Not the videos, but the, the, the gameplay itself. My god, was that awesome. Oh god, oh, I'm gonna die. Nope. But Lord. The Game Freak refuses to do anything interesting. Oh, Fillery Feather. Ooh, ooh, I'm taking Fillery Feather. They, they refuse to do anything cool and interesting because they know that they don't have to. Game Freak has... They have like 100 employees. A, a studio of their size normally has like 500 employees. And remember, these are 100 employees over like four different games. Or I think three different games. But 100 employees separated over four games. I don't even know how they get that, how they get shit done. I might die here. I might become Lazarus. That's absurd. Oh, we're at the tier cap. Hell yeah. Round of applause. And they just milk everything. They milk their games for money. And I mean, they're gonna they're gonna get away with it. They're game freak. They're the they and and the Pokemon company and Nintendo. They they have the number one highest grossing grossing franchise in the world. The games aren't even their number one money maker. It's the excuse me. It's the merchandise. The merchandise is what makes their money. So why even care about the games? And that goes into why I don't buy Pokemon merchandise anymore. The only Pokemon merchandise I will ever purchase is unofficial, non-official Pokemon merchandise. I will still purchase the game. The reason why I will still purchase the games is because purchasing the games. Well, okay. It's probably not even that good of an idea to purchase the games. But the reason why I still purchase the games is because purchasing the games does not add as nearly as much revenue as the plushies and the trading cards and stuff do. If I really wanted to go full, full anti-game freak vote with my wallet, I would not buy the games. I probably won't even buy the next one. If it wasn't for Phalanx, if it was not for Phalanx and Gen 8, I would hate Gen 8. I'm gonna be honest. Phalanx, well, Phalanx and some of the other Pokemon and the, the post game is ass. Post game's ass. So I mean, there's that. But mainly just Phalanx. I love Phalanx so much. Now that I think about it, I'm yeah, I'm probably not even gonna buy the Gen 9 games unless I see a significant improvement in graphics. At least at least on par with everything else on the current fucking system. Better code that does not make the game fucking anus. And an actual damn Nat Dex. And I, I don't know. I don't want to see them remove features from the old game unless the features were ass. Mega, let, Mega Evolution, for example. Just keep it there! We don't need Z-Moves! Z-Moves are dumb! Z-Moves are stupid. I hate the way that they do the little dance. That, that little dance they do is... It, that little dance they do makes me so angry. The little dance they do is, is infuriating whenever they do their little Z-Move. Gigamax and Gigantamaxing and all that stuff is dumb. It's not as bad as Z-Moves, but they could have just been Mega Evolutions. But for whatever reason, no, we can't have Mega Evolutions. We can't put Skarmory in our game. We can't make new Mega Evolutions. No, we're Game Freak. We're better than that. You're our, you're our personal wallet. Now buy our merch, slave. And they add stuff like that that Pokemon teeth brushing game. Great. I would. I sure would. I, I'm ecstatic. I really want to brush my teeth for Pokemon. All right. This might be where I part with the um. Action. Action. 
That was a voice crack. Actually, no. Starter deck, come on me. And we got an Ace of Clubs. Uh, Alright, this is where I play the key beggar. I just... It, it's, it gets bad whenever fans are making games better than the original creators. And this is why I'm partially glad that there are no new mother games being produced. Shigesato Itoi himself said he wanted the fans to make the next mother games. And the fans sure are fucking inspired by him. And I mean, in true mother vein, I wouldn't be... I, I honestly would have... I, I, I kind of ex expected to see Mother 4 just get picked up and become something official. Because that's what Shigesato Itoi said he wanted, right? And that didn't happen. Instead, they became oddity and all that stuff. That's that's cool. I'm not taking that. What do you think I am, dumb? I mean, yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I I wish they would have kept the magic magic elements for the for the guys and just renamed it to like just renamed it to magic. I think they I think they did for some characters. I don't know. I don't really care about that. But though though mother is stagnated and we're 100% reliant on fans for new mother content. And I mean, even if it isn't Mother Content, Undertale, Oddity, Lisa, Lisa the Painful, mmm, good ass game right there. We still have shit like that. So in the end, I mean, Mother's gonna be okay. It's still, the, stag the stagnation sucks, but we don't have corporate greed ruining the games that we once loved. In, in general, Nintendo just fucks shit up. All fun games they make just get fucked. And they will get fucked. They, they, legacy content does not exist on the Nintendo Switch. You got Mario World, Metroid, so, some shit you don't care about. And that's about it, right? It, it's, it's terrible. The, the eShop just consistently got worse and worse. It was ridiculous. Legacy content's non-existent. The eShop just progressively got worse and worse. On the Wii, mmm, the Wii Shop was amazing. Wii U, the Wii Shop was not as good. But it got Earthbound, got some other games, and there is no eShop on the Switch. There is the, you can buy original Switch games, there is no virtual console. I meant virtual console, not eShop. The, the virtual console has gotten worse and worse. There is no virtual console. Now, paying for online gets you a virtual console streaming service where it doesn't even have half the, the lineup. A every single time, they just completely re-release the they they start from scratch every single time again and again and then they wonder why people emulate and they wonder why people make their own new games they wonder why people make am2r or pokemon uranium or any service for downloading roms for free or emulation in general look at sega you can buy it's not the best emulation but you can legally buy the roms for Sonic 3, Sonic 1, Sonic 2, all kinds of games. I'm listing off Sonic because those are the, my favorite Sega games, of course. You can legally buy all of those on Steam, and you can legally run them in your fav favorite emula emulator. Any emulator you got, you can buy the ROMs, use their, the emulator they provide, or use your own emulator that has better settings for free. Emu the emulation is the greatest alternative ever, because it's one fully customizable. You can customize graphics, controls, sounds, textures, anything. And then they wonder, why? Why don't? Why are people pirating? Well, it's because their services are complete fucking shit. Their their services are absolute anus, 100% anus, and it's completely ridiculous. And it makes me so fucking fervently angry. And, they, and then even worse, they they ban they ban emulation websites and don't even sell the, the copies that they were co copies the ROMs that they were they, that they were hosting. They don't even sell the, the ROMs they were hosting. They it's they want us to forget about legacy content, I suppose. Whenever legacy content is almost the only thing I like about Nintendo nowadays. I like Smash Bros. Mario Kart is fun with friends. But whenever I want to, whenever I think Nintendo, I don't think Mario Odyssey. I think Mario Galaxy. Whenever I think Pokemon, I don't think I don't think Sword and Shield. I think Heart Gold and Soul Silver. With Metroid, 
I have nothing to think about modernly. Mo modern is modernly a word? I don't know. I don't have I don't have anything modern about Metroid to think about. Kirby. Whenever I think, okay, Kirby. Kirby is an exception. Kirby's. <sighs> Kirby games are average. That's what they are. You can't say you can't say Kirby games are super good. But they, I, I still love Kirby games. Kirby games are at there. Yeah, they're average. But they are what any game that strives to be average should be. They are amazing. They had, they had a few missteps, but in general, when I think Kirby, I can think about any Kirby game and be satisfied. Superstar Ultra? Yes, please. Oh, oh no, I died. Now I'm Lazarus. Superstar Ultra? Yes, please. Or Ro Planet Robobot again. Yes, please. Did I hear Triple Deluxe? Mmm, I'll take that. I'll play Kirby's Adventure. Nightmare in Dreamland. Uh, the, the four-player one. That, uh, you know, the, 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 the mirror. The mirror one. Canvas Curse? Mmm, mm, mm, I'll play me some Canvas Curse. I'll play me some Epic Yarn. I might have, I might have a Kirby bias. I don't know. Oh, now I'm Blue Baby. Oh, God, now I'm Blue Baby. Who knows, maybe I'm biased towards Kirby. But I love him. Whenever, whenever I think Smash Bros, I think... Damn, there's a, lot, there's a lot of pedophiles in that community. No, whenever I think Smash Bros, I think... I just... I just think. In, I mean, in general, Sm Smash Bros is just... There's Melee. There's 64 and then and Brawl. And then there's the modern version. No, because... And I say that... Despite there only being- I, I just named the first three versions. I say that because I have a feeling that- Okay, well that's the end of the run. That's just sad. I'll finish my thought though. I say that because I have a feeling that, in general, the, mo the only relevant Smash Brothers game, besides the first three, is gonna be the modern one. Ultimate might be able to stay relevant because it has it'll be able to say it has every character but in general there's nothing to come back to smash 64 you have solid gameplay and it's the very first one so you, you want to check it out melee pristine gameplay and the competitive scene is mmm that's some good shit brawl has subspace emissary you, 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 you can't say no to that you cannot say no to subspace emissary if you do you got something wrong Smash 4 doesn't have anything, and Ultimate has every character, and it's it's the most recent version. That's all it really has. All right, well that's the uh, that's the episode. I'll see you all next time, where I hopefully actually win. Um, uh, yeah, that's it. See you.